I first met him, I thought some geneticist should figure out what, what happened here. <laughs> taking Pavarotti and plugging him into a Marshall amp, <laughs> turning it up to 11. It's a mixture of Spinal Tap and Pavarotti. <laughs> I immediately thought he was the perfect singer for that. I thought he was extraordinary. The first time I went to play, I knew that I didn't want to walk on the stage and just play and stand there and sing. I approach singing a song exactly the same way that I would approach a character doing a play or a film. The songs do not work unless I've built a character. The great thing about Meatloaf is he's his own special effect. And if you just focus on him, he's stunning as a, as a performer. And he'll be the first to say he thinks of himself as an actor rather than a singer. You have to be willing to go out on a line where nobody else is doing what anyone else is doing and sit out there. And when Bad Out of Hell came out, they threw everything, including, I thought they were going to blow us up with dynamite at some point. My feeling about why Bad Out of Hell was special for its time is that it would be special in any time. And partly that's the answer that I think it's timeless in the sense that it didn't fit into any trend. It's never been part of what's going on. You could, you could release that record at any time and it would be out of place, so to speak. I worked with Meat Last on Bad Outta Hell. I did that one record. And then about, you know, 12 years after that, for some reason, it just felt like the right time to do something. I don't know why, but we got together and it seemed like a good idea. I didn't call it Bad Out of Hell 2 just to identify with the first record. It really does feel like an extension of that. Um, it's a deeper exploration of it, let me put it that way. It was a, it was a chance to go back to that world and, and explore it deeper. And it did always feel incomplete. I mean, because I did conceive it like a film, and, you know, what would you do without Die Hard 2, you know? I'd Do Anything For Love was the first song I wrote, and it was definitely a Beauty and the Beast kind of story. Beauty and the Beast is a beautiful love story. It needed to be that kind of gothic. If it was going to work, because story videos in Rockland, in a, if you're doing a story, 20% of the time they work, and 80% of the time they don't. So we were gambling big, but I was gambling on my ability to build a character and make that character, you know, cohesive with the rest of the piece and make it flow as a character, even though we were doing, you know, the fast cuts that, that rock video do, but still maintain that, that character line through that video and, and run that thread. So I was relying on myself and Michael Bay and propaganda and the, the whole thing. And I'm telling you, I was a nervous wreck because all the, but I think my career was on the line with this one. But it, it worked and it's really great. To get the makeup on, it took us about, the first day it took us a long time, but we got pretty quick at it. Bob Keen did the makeup. No, it's foam. It's just they just do foam rubber molds and they just glue them on and then he paints it. The guy's a brilliant, brilliant makeup artist. I mean, and we wanted something simple, but yet we wanted him to be scary. But at the same time, I wanted the ability to make him sympathetic. I 
I did the video for four days for Anything for Love. And <clears throat> the guys on the, on the crew of the video, on the fourth day, were walking by me going, you know, any other video shoot that I'd ever done for four days, by the fourth day, I hate the song. I mean, I hate the song. And they go, this is a great song. We don't hate this song. This song is great. And then they would walk by me and go, but what is it that he won't do? <laughs> I would do anything for love, I'd run right into hell and back. I would do anything for love, I'll never lie to you and that's a fact. But I'll never forget the way you feel right now, no way. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. What won't I do? I would do anything for love. Uh, what, what he won't do is said about six times in the song. Um, very specifically. It sort of is a little puzzle, because I guess it goes by. But they're all great things. They're all things, I won't stop doing beautiful things, and I won't do bad things. It's a very noble, I mean, I'm proud of that song, because it's very, it's very much out of like the world of Excalibur to me. It's like Sir Lancelot or something, very noble and chivalrous. That's my favorite song on the record. It's, it's the most ambitious. The hardest song to write and to get across was the song Objects in the Rearview Mirror May Appear Closer Than They Are. And emotionally, it was a difficult one to write because it's, uh, it's a very passionate song. It's, it's really, I think, maybe the most passionate one on the record. It's got images of fertility and rebirth, but it's really got very good sexual images, images of cars, which I always like. Jim does not write from what he believes or what happens to him. He creates worlds, and inside the world of Life is a Lemon, that particular character that he was singing about, yeah, he thought everything was defective. But it's also, it's funny. It's, it's a funny song. Real comedy is real life, but in, in, in that character's life, yeah, all of that was defective. His girlfriend had broke up with him, you know, it's like, what good is sex? What good is this? What about your parents? Oh, they're defective. You know, they forgot the warranty, you know? And so when you get into those lyrics, you got you know, the batteries are shot. They forgot the warranty. It's a dead end street to me. The answers are all very funny. So, but, but I didn't deliver it in tongue in cheek manner. I delivered it straight ahead, real. My mind is a movie, and everything that comes out of my mouth, there's a picture to go with it. And so I learn from that. Everything I do, I think, is dictated by the dramatics, by the fact that it's a character singing in a dramatic situation, and I try to be incredibly true to that. You know, you have to find positive in everything you do, and you, that keeps you moving forward, and you have to be willing to learn. And it's like, that's, that's my goal, and the minute that I ever stop learning in this business, that's when I, it's time for me to go. Everything to me is the song. Everything serves the song. I, I feel very much like a parent, that they're, they're, they're my children, the songs, but I'm very protective of the songs. It's, it's hard enough writing them for me. It's a torturous process, and it's like taming a wild beast. So I just, I just want to learn constantly. That's it. I want to be a better, better, better everything. <laughs>